we are problem solvers and we are leaders. To develop a business, you need to be able to identify the needs in a market and be able to find the resources to meet those needs. That's what a business, the purpose of these businesses that we run are about. And your ability to do that is not different just because there's uncertainty. There's even more opportunity in a market where most people are paralyzed with fear or concern to actually capture market share, to be a better leader and a provider than your, your competitor and, and capture the hearts of your consumers. So I want to talk about number one, reviewing what your customer is going through right now, what they're feeling, what their worries are, and how that's shifting their buying patterns. Number two, I want to talk about what businesses can do. So we're going to give some examples of current businesses that are taking action to meet their consumers' needs so that you can possibly learn from that. And then we're also going to review the uh, past data on recessions and review, you know, there have been recessions throughout all time. And although this isn't permanently considered a recession yet, we know that there's uncertainty and during times of uncertainty and where people are afraid, the buying patterns are the same. The good news is that people continue to buy. It's just that they buy differently. So we want to study these things to be able to learn and apply those things to ourselves and our businesses so we can pivot. We're then going to talk about strategies of application. How can you apply this, this information about past trends to your current business so that you can take action and be a leader within your own customer base? And then lastly, we'll have space and time for questions and answers. So first of all, let's get into the customer and what they are currently going through in, um, in this time of crisis. And the first thing you need to realize, and you know, I'm not trying to be redundant. Some of you are the, are customers and you're experiencing the same thing. So forgive me if it seems redundant, but it's a good place to start. Number one, people are losing jobs. So there are people in service industries, especially lower income or people who are very leveraged who are feeling financial stress. So they are afraid of their budget. They are afraid of um, their future happiness, and that's creating a level of concern and anxiety besides stress on their budget. Consumers are also having to work from home. So some people whose jobs are secure or who have children are having to not only work from home, but keep their entire family there. And in the past where they might have relied on other services to help entertain their children and educate their children and care for their children, they're needing to do that at home. And they're not able to go out to restaurants to be able to um, order food and enjoy community and relationship building. So that includes affecting people who are doing sales and going out to meet people, extroverts who are you know, used to working in an office environment. A lot of people are now uh, having to rethink how they're doing business from home, rethink how they're caring for their family and entertaining their kids, and rethink through their whole career. So there's a lot of upheaval, which means that people are looking for leadership because if you're anything like me, and if you're human, if you have a pulse and you read too much of this negative things that are going on, it does put a depressing fear, a state of fear in your mind. And it can cloud over your optimistic perspective of the future. So we want to remember, you know, we have to talk to ourselves. Leaders have to not only you know, lead other people, but first we have to lead ourselves about the perspective, the way to interpret the situation and develop a strategy for hope. For within our own hearts and minds and in our businesses, for employees, et cetera. So now that we've refreshed the context of sort of the feelings that customers are feeling, let's talk about what businesses are needing to do to address these changes in behavior and, and feelings amongst our, um, amongst our consumers. So first, first and foremost, but what are businesses currently doing? The, the first piece is that a lot of consumers are changing how they're doing business. So they are seeking to actually bring products to the consumer. And so that is applying to the service industry. So people who own medical practices, um, consulting practices, uh, even doctor, your know, things like dermatology, providing consulting through a medical or digital webinar, tele teleconferencing method. So people are bringing relationship and face-to-face -face conversations online. And that means that people are investing in Zoom and a, a number of other online commerce platforms where you can have digital conversations and continue to service people or offer, offering in-home um, services where chiropractors are driving to their patients' office at their homes for those patients who are feeling concerned 
um, or allowing for phone conversations to occur before an in-office visit to verify that, hey, this really is an urgent meeting. So that's, there's also restaurants and service providers in that capacity that are allowing for a drive up opportunities where you can drive up and pick up your products. And that's even including in grocery stores. And we've seen already a movement for Walmart and other grocery stores to offer pickup, order online, pick up in store. And that is a new, this is going to become a wave of the future. Once people start doing these things, they're not going to want to go back. So restaurants are, are offering that. Uh, physical product companies who rely on in-store sales or rely on um, their web sales are really focusing on online commerce and using that as the main way to get consumers information. And so that includes maximizing and optimizing an online shopping cart, utilizing amazon.com and really articulating to consumers where they can get their products because they're currently only able to get them at grocery stores and CVS and pharmacies and um, gas stations. So utilizing other ways to define how you're going to get you know, that product to consumers through free shipping and really optimizing the online platform. So here's some really great examples of companies that are doing that, that might inspire you and be applicable to your business. So for example, West Elm is sending out emails to explain and address the fact that a lot of people who are working from home realize they aren't comfortable in their home. They don't have a comfortable chair. The chair that I have squeaks too much. So I am definitely looking to optimize and make my office more comfortable, more attractive, and more of a place that I want to spend all day long in. So West Elm sent out an email addressing in-home offices and those concerns. Um, William Sonoma has reached out and sent out emails to consumers knowing that they are going to be cooking um, over the weekends with their families and providing opportunities and reminders of delicious recipes and products that they can order on the web that they could have shipped to their home that would help to make for really fun entertaining. So that includes um, molds that you could pour to make bakeable donuts or a uh, bunt cake mold so that you can encourage your family to make cookies and cakes and products like that as well as including recipes in those emails. Target, if you go to the target.com website, they are showing um, really great things. They've got basically their whole website is decked out to show families, hey, how do you create entertainment for everybody? Let me see if I can actually do this here. Um, showing games and advertising games and making sure that they're they're addressing the coronavirus but they're not doing it in a way that creates fear they're doing it in a way that says hey we recognize that your needs are changing as a consumer how can we help you here's a really great moment to advertise products that actually drive sales um other businesses that are doing some great things i, I saw shock zero did a great advertisement because a lot of people were talking about social distancing and it's a very fearful thing to say that I couldn't go and see someone else. And there was a, an ad that was posted as a public warning that showed matches all in a row. And one of them, if you just pulled one match out and you lit them with the row, you couldn't light the other matches. And that's an example of social distancing. And Shock Zero did a great advertisement or social media post where they sort of mimicked that. They did chocolate, you know, eating a piece of chocolate, eating a piece of chocolate, and then suddenly removing one piece of chocolate and it's stopping the cycle. And so they were acknowledging the social impact of what's going on right now, but they didn't do it in a way that was going to scare customers. They actually made it something to celebrate doing something good for the people around you. And they gave a social distancing giveaway and um, gave away both money and candy to get people to be more involved in a community, knowing and acknowledging that they would be at home and feeling a little bit scared. So these are examples of customers or companies that are doing a really great job of sharing what they're doing to make a difference. And there's also, um, you know, Budweiser is, is the other thing that you could do is do giveaways and sharing that with a bunch of other people that are your customers about how you're making a, a contribution in the midst of this difficult time, Budweiser is contributing um, hand sanitizer to help uh, to help count counterbalance the fact that a lot of people have sold out of these items. And so, let me share this with you really quick, so you can see how they turned this difficult moment into an opportunity to grab attention to show their 
shared commitment to supporting people in the middle of a very difficult time. So you can see that these are examples of current businesses that are actually capitalizing on this challenging moment to better serve customers and articulate um, how they're aligned with them in the midst of this the change in their needs. How now having said all of that, you know, there's, there's a lot of people who have different types of businesses that might not be uh, applicable to this particular, those particular examples. And so I want to come to historical information about recessions. What have we historically seen has happened um, in terms of products? Whenever there's a recession, people continue to buy products. They just buy different products. And what products, some products stay the same, some products disappear completely, and others actually go up. So the question is, what products you know, stay the same and go up, and, and where does your product lie? And then what can we learn from that? How can we apply the other categories to possibly pivot your product to better succeed? So here I'm gonna talk about, um, these are the categories that are, are really continue to go up or, or flatline, um, stay the same during a recession. The first piece is sin, sin products, products that are considered normally not good for you or good for society that are indulgences and kind of a momentary escape, escapism products, those continue to sell really well. So what are examples of that? Cigarettes, alcohol, fast food, soft drinks, energy drinks, coffee, sugar, candy. Candy really does well as well. Tattoos, lottery tickets, uh, things that are a escape that sort of change and alter your state of mind and your mood. So if you have products like that, uh, this is a time to recognize you probably will be doing well. The key is to connect what is what you're going through with your consumers' experiences. Um, entertainment products, obviously, like in the Great Depression, the movie theater industry just boomed because people were buying tickets to escape and to entertain their family and have a momentary break. As long as it was affordable, they really were looking to kind of escape from that from maybe the frustrations of their work and their, their finances. So what, what else could that look like in our modern day? That is live streaming, Netflix videos. Uh, a lot of social media platforms are gaining a lot of attention. TikTok is blowing up because people at home between breaks can't go talk to their coworkers. So they're going online. We also will see, so what does that mean for you as a physical product brand owner or service owner? It means that if you can't see your customers face to face, these are great platforms to go and reach out to them to be able to reach them right where they're at. They're gonna be wanting to advertise on those platforms and, and even create added value content so that you can share with consumers on TikTok how to make a great Sichuan you know, beef at home, which is a great easy recipe realizing that you can reach consumers and get free advertising if you can create great, great content that's entertaining. Other ways that people are trying to be entertained and will spend money on is books, board games, and that can be applied to your products because you can add packaging artwork that helps to give people something to do. And I, the classic example is a cereal box that has a crossword puzzle on the back that you could cut out and give to your kids to entertain them for a minute. That could also look like making, inviting people back to your website to be able to offer games that people could play with the products that you have. Or it could be, you know, hide the cheese it. It could be something as simple as that. Take your cracker and hide it all over the house and, or mix up different ingredients to put on top of those crackers. Having fun recipes that are um, creating a moment where people can find entertainment where you're contributing to their life and being a part of it. I think that any website or e-newsletter and marketing should definitely be adding value and giving people a reason to feel joy when they're enjoying your product. Other things that really do well is smaller indulgences. So if you have a luxury product, what you will find is that the smaller version of it, the cheaper version of it will usually do well. Um, in the Great Depression and in the last, um, the last big dip in the market, the housing crisis, gas station items, small indulgences that you'd buy at checkout. There were impulse items. Those things did really well. And what, if you have a product that's selling, for example, for 25 to $40, is there a way for that you could redefine your product, package it smaller, turn it into something that could be a smaller indulgence? Because like another example would be uh, perfumes and how perfumes um, 
might be a hundred to two hundred dollars to make a purchase of at Sephora and those are expensive luxury items but in a time of crisis people don't not only don't want to spend money but they don't want to appear they don't want to appear to have too much money it's sort of insulting to other people who are going through a hard time and so smaller samples of or smaller uh, travel size versions of those perfumes will still continue to sell if today's market is anything like what we've seen in the past uh, same is true with small candies or candles you know you can take those luxury items that seem very un unnecessary and indulgent and turn them into smaller treats and people will be much more likely to make a purchase with them staple products will obviously be doing really well we know that everyone needs toilet paper we everyone needs paper towels the question really comes down to though where are you in that category a lot of staple products will sell really well in bulk items at this moment because people are looking to save money and to buy enough for their family. So the question is, if you had to choose between spending money on a new product or small, you know, you only had so much money to put into inventory, your bulk items are going to be the ones that are going to be doing well. And to speak to being a part of someone's home, being an everyday item, you can build and build your brand and pivot that direction, that's a really strong and stable position to be in in this market. Another thing that we've seen is that people start eating from at home. They stop going to restaurants and the quarantine is gonna make this even more obvious that people can do some takeout and, and fast food, which they'll continue to do because families are busy, but ready-made meals will see a, a spike and that includes everyday value items you know bulk stir fries where people just want to save money and get those those bellies filled quickly but also luxury items that are ready to eat that they normally would order in a restaurant so the prosciutto the the luxury cheeses that go on crackers people will still want to buy the things that they were buying in the past so your products are not going to lose lose desire it's just they they might need to have them in a more affordable platform so selling it in stores and educating consumers how they can have a rest, create a restaurant experience in their homes is going to be important for you in designing your packaging, your marketing materials, and in repositioning your, your market or your product. The other thing to note is that luxury investment items will continue to sell if they are tried and true investments that don't lose value. So things like a Rolex, things that are uh, considered to be very high-end cars, those products for some reason continue to sell. And based on the economic articles I've read, it seems that the uber wealthy just continue to have money and they continue to spend, but they usually spend that money in a recession on products that will have a timeless, you know, hundred year track record of a reputation. And so what does that mean for the products that really don't do well are ones that just were a little, that, Consumers consider to be too frivolous because what happens when, when a few people have money and a lot of people are suffering, it also becomes an embarrassing thing to be seen buying a luxury product. So all of these YouTube videos of people showing themselves driving fancy cars, uh, if, any, if this market is anything like what it was in the past, people will find that offensive. And if they've lost their job and you're bragging about riding around in a helicopter and so those luxury goods will be seen in more private environments so whether that's in a private room in a restaurant so it won't be the most available readily ordered thing so you should plan your inventory according to that and also to realize that um you know people people will not want it to be just as showy and as public of advertising you want to you want to emphasize the investment the long-term longevity of that product and um to say that it's timeless during times of, of concern and fear, that's a great market position to put yourself into. So having reviewed that, the question again that I want you to ask yourself is where is your product currently existing amongst that list of products that do well? And if you're not currently really perfectly fitting into one of those categories, the question is how can you reposition yourself in this next season to be able to be successful during this market downturn? So you should ask yourself that. Hopefully you have a piece of paper out, you've written out that question and you took some notes to think about how can I position my product to be in one of those categories, those recession-proof categories. And now I wanna talk about 
you know, in light of these things, what are the actions that you can take to be able to pivot your products so that you do successfully get into a category that is recession proof? And the great news is there's a lot of things that you can do. And the first and foremost powerful thing that you can do is to work on your branding and to rebrand. And people, there are, you know, Warren Buffett says that when people are afraid, this is the time to actually be investing. When the market is really down, that's when you should be buying buying a home because it's when the best value is going to happen and when the greatest amount of wealth can be captured. And there are people who will stop branding packages, will stop packaging artwork, and will just be paralyzed for fear. But those people are at the highest risk of just losing market share because they aren't taking action. This is the moment to rebrand or upgrade your brand to position well to be able to last during this next, you know, five years of a bear market, three to five years of a bear market, however long this lasts. So obviously fun products are going to do really well. Ones that provide entertainment. We're talking about smaller sizes. So things that are small indulgences. You also want to look at packaging that will either make your product, if it's a value one, larger so that it's going to be family, family friendly and appropriate for this hoarding mentality that people currently have. Or that's a small indulgence that people don't feel guilty you know, breaking the budget, buying something that would make them happy. And however you position that, it needs to be done, obviously, on your packaging artwork. Um, it's the first place that we're referring to when we're talking about branding is your packaging artwork and defining what that looks like and really analyzing your product SKU offering this coming year and making sure that it's aligned with where you need to be in your consumer's buying uh, habits. The, you know, the third thing would be to look at your website and your shopping experience. After this coronavirus experience, no one is going to go back to doing business exactly the same as what they did before. Online commerce is daily becoming more and more significant in people's lives. They're, they're buying all of their groceries on the internet, especially when they have all of their kids at home and can't handle taking them all to the grocery store. So the question is, what is your website shopping experience like? So take your team and go through that website. Analyze what it's like on different browsers in light of this current um, event. Are you addressing the coronavirus and the precautions you're currently taking to keep them safe and the products that you're manufacturing and protecting your employees? It's really important to utilize this time to message, message people about what you're doing and how you're leading so that people are confident that you're in control of continuing to stay in business and running your business according to healthy practices. And what is the shopping cart messaging? When I'm going through the shopping cart, are you promoting um, irresponsible products that might be insulting or are you promoting products that I for sure want? Is toilet paper, do you have toilet paper as an offering? Is it available? Um, is there a reminder that's adding, you know, encouraging me to go make that purchase at the very end of my uh, shopping experience? What is the email that's following up with my order stating? Is it branded? Is it really, really making the shopping experience exciting and easy and emails after the product is delivered is it reminding me to come back and giving me incentives to stay online with you you know also in addition to your online branding and shopping experience are you on amazon 60 percent of all online sales in 2018 happened through amazon and what that really what that means is that people who were looking to do online purchases went to Amazon first before going to your website, before going to Target, before going to Google, they went to Amazon to make their purchase and type in like chocolate candy company, mustard, like sweet and honey mustard. If your product is not currently there and optimized, your competitor is coming up first, which means that consumers who are moving from stores where you might dominate to an online presence are losing, you're losing visibility, you're losing market share. And if you're there, but other people are reselling your product, you might be losing massive opportunities to make sure that the quality of your product is excellent, to control the messaging and optimize that. So I, I feel that it's really an ignorant thing. If, if really a bad for your business, if you're not on Amazon and taking advantage of that consumer platform for shopping. So those are ways that you can analyze and control your sales in light of this market. Uh, looking at Amazon. Uh, I would also say that, um, sales is really important. Your sales position with, with buy, retail buyers right now is, is really crucial. So if your product is a staple, an item that you know is already selling out in other places, 
it is okay to send your buyer a quick, short, short email that just says, hey, I'm checking in to make sure that you're okay. My family is under quarantine. We're playing Uno. Hope your family is doing just as well. Okay, so that's a nice, friendly, um, family-focused or uh, relationship-focused sentence that's not going to overwhelm them. Don't attach a PDF, but you can say, you know, our mustard is selling out in stores. Do you need inventory? Let us know. We can schedule a meeting on Thursday at 2 at, or Friday at 1. Something super brief to just remind them that you're there, that you have inventory, that you're there to support any of their purchasing needs. So that's a great email. It's super friendly. I would definitely send one of those out in the next two weeks, even as early as this week, just to make sure that they're, you're in front of your buyer's um, face and positioning your product in light of this current climate. If your product is not one that is currently selling on the shelves and you're seeking to do that for the future, and you know that they're going to be placing your product in the planogram soon, making decisions soon, you, this next week, you can still send them an email and remind them that you exist. <laughs> remind them that, you're, that they really enjoyed seeing your product or that, you know, asking them, saying, hey, in light of everything, I'm sure a lot of your planning is put on pause. We wanted to find out when you want us to come check back in with you about your, your buying decisions for chocolate for, for Christmas 2020. Um, anything we can do to support you, including samples or an online Zoom meeting, we are here to support you. So that short two to three sentence email is a quick reminder to them that you are present, that you are there, that you're available, and it gives you a chance to hear back from them about what's going on. Now, if you don't hear from them, don't be offended. A buyer, retail buyer is way more busy than you are. I, I promise. They are so busy. They have tons of emails and people wanting their attention. So if you don't hear back from them, give it a couple weeks and or maybe even a month, depending upon your like how warm or cold your relationship is and when you know they're gonna make a buying decision, and email them again uh, to just check back in. Don't don't give up just because you didn't hear back, but always keep your email short and respectful. Uh, another thing that you can do is, like I mentioned, get Zoom set up. If you don't have Zoom and an online conferencing, video conferencing platform, this is very powerful because in today's current climate, we cannot have a face-to-face -face meeting, but we can have a Zoom meeting. So this is, if you don't have a subscription, go get that set up and you can very easily send your retail buyer both an event invite and then a link to this thing, to this program. They click on it and they're able to see your face and you're able to go have your sales meeting. You can grab your product, show it to them. Um, you can send it to their office so that you both, the two of you can have it on your desks at the same time. And you can also share digital files. You can use Zoom to actually do your whole sales presentation. And you might find that it's even easier than doing an in-person meeting because you don't have to travel and you're able to make sure that you can control their attention on the pages that you really want to in your sales presentation. So don't give up hope on those things just change and pivot how you're going to sell your products address in your sales presentation a recession and what products are going to sell and why is your product going to work within this next upcoming environment of uncertainty so having said all this i hope that you find it hopeful there is in every challenging moment there is great opportunity for those who will seek to understand our customers' needs and the current economic climate and invest in a direction that's going to support those, those, those needs. And demand has not changed in the sense that consumers still want to live the life they were living five days ago, a month ago. Their buying decisions have changed because they're concerned. And so you need to address those concerns and pivot their paradigm and their perspective and pivot yourself to really meet where they're at right now. How can you give them access to the lifestyle and the freedom and the joy and the entertainment that they were originally wanting to buy from you? Your product is not out of date. It just needs to be changed and pivoted to better serve your customer in this, in this environment. And you have what it takes. You have what it takes as a business owner. You will be able to do this. You need to guard your, your heart and your mind and your thoughts, not get too down. Seek out other people to be creative with, like like join webinars and watch YouTube videos like this to be able to get inspiration, not be discouraged. Um, if you have any questions and you wanted to have a discussion about it, we'd love to see comments below in the webinar to talk about it. And you can also email us to kind of share your product. And we have, we offer a 15 minute free consultation 
for people who are looking to reposition their product and talk about a possible strategy that could be appropriate for you. So I hope that that was encouraging, that even though your customers are in crisis, you, you will be able to overcome that and there are strategies you can take to pivot. If you have anything else that you need from me, please let us know. And I hope uh, that you have a great day, great healthy day. And we're wishing you the best over here from Dallas at Pearl Resourcing and Start to Sold. Thanks so much and have a great day. Bye.